Hey guys, what's going on? Just signing in with my latest video blog. Um, I hope everyone is well. Um, my last video blog was entitled 38 Hours Sober. Um, and that was about three and a half weeks ago. Um, so suffice to say, I drank again. Surprise, surprise. Um, on that occasion, I, I think I got to around about three, put about three days sobriety. Um, and then I think that night I chose to pick a drink up, which is ridiculous. Um, and I think I continue to pretty much drink every evening, not my, not vast amounts, but nevertheless I drank for a further sort of week and a half to two weeks. Um, I'm not too sure on the numbers. Um, but anyway, yeah, after that video, I, I continue to drink. Um, I think what's quite important for me to put out there is a little bit more detail about my situation. Now, this is not putting out any excuses to why I picked a drink up um, after almost 18 months of sobriety. Um, but it is kind of important for me to try to explain that why I continue to drink while these other things were going on. So very long story short, um, I was running out of cash. Uh, I've been really struggling to find a job um, in what I do and then I kind of looked around for any basic job and for whatever reason um, nothing came along. So I was in a position where I was running out of cash um, and as you know I'd split from my part my ex-partner um, I had money coming from my house but that's not happening um, so financially I, I, I got into a little bit of a mess and if I'd just continued to sort of sit where I was then in a month and a half's time I would have been sat there unable to pay bills which was ridiculous so this, was, this has been on my mind a lot and it's been worrying um, so I made the decision with the help of a couple of friends um, to basically make the decision that I'm going to go to North America for six months um, and kind of start again and basically get my shit together. Um, because up to, I got to 18 months or just before and everything was really good and then things started to fall apart for various reasons, um, which was very disappointing. Um, but it, it happened and we've you know we've got to bounce back from that now um so i'm actually in north america right now which is really cool um i've been here gosh it's sunday today so i'm i'm, I'm just over a week and a half here which is which is great um well, in actual fact, I've been here 11 days, and the reason I know that is because today I'm 12 days sober, which is great. That's a real achievement. Um, so the, my kind of plan is I'm staying with a friend, possibly moving on somewhere else to stay with another friend, um, depending on some things I've got going on, um, if they happen or not. Um, obviously the view is to try and get a bit of work over here and, and get some cash behind me uh, and then we'll go from there. Um, but it's really exciting seeing a brand new country, um, cultures and, and brand new different culture. So it's, it's, it's very, very exciting and I'm really enjoying it. Um, and it's so much better to be alternative of being in the UK and running out of money and being really in shit. Um, so that's where I'm up to. So because I knew when I made my last video on the 14th of April, I knew this was happening. I didn't really speak about it. Um, from from that video on the 14th of April right up to when I flew on the 25th, so we'll call it the 24th of April, it was just Groundhog Day every day. It was just wake up in the morning, right, This you're, you, you're getting very close now to flying. You cannot drink any of it. Yeah, 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 no problems. Yeah, I'm feeling strong. And... You know, that's how the morning would start, and then it would go downhill throughout the day until, until you finally give up and go, well, I'll just have a little drink. I won't drink too much. And then, yeah, yeah, and, and I was only drinking small amounts. Um, I wasn't getting hammered or anything. Um, but I was obviously spending money that I shouldn't have been, 
putting empty calories in my body, eating shit at the same time. Um, and that just continued. So I think after that last video, I think when I picked up, as I say, I think it was around about the third day, then I pretty much drank um, every day up until the 24th, the night before I flew, which was very disappointing. And um, I actually lied to my sobriety partner um, about it. And that was very disappointing as well. Because um, that person's got some things going on as well. Um, but if you can't be honest with your your sobriety partner or you might, if you're in AA, you'll call it your sponsor. You know, you, you have that real deep relationship where that person needs to know exactly what's going on with you. And um, I chose to make, in my mind, some little white lies about my sobriety date. And I think I ended up lying about three or four times and then eventually coming, when I say eventually coming clean, like only a day or two after, because I'm the... I felt it was it's quite guilty, you know. You've you've stayed sober quite comfortably for nearly eighteen months, and you know the the lying and deceit about the alcoholism uh, had completely disappeared. But here it was rearing its ugly head again. Um, yeah, not good, not good at all. Um, anyway, I've got all that sorted out, and that's all all good. And so, as I say, we're celebrating twelve days today, and I've got. <laughs> The weird thing is, when I was back in the UK on those last couple of days, I honestly knew within my heart, 100%, that as soon as I get on that plane, that's it for drink. I, I just knew that because I wouldn't be in a position to drink over here. And more importantly, I, I wouldn't want to drink because while I was just having these little little drinks in the UK, you know, it, it wasn't enjoyable. It wasn't... and. It just creates more of, more of a want inside you. Um, and the only way for me to live is completely 100% sober and add the other things on with my nutrition and, and um, health regime, exercise and what have you. And, and just, just I, I have to live in a certain way and I want to live that way. That's, that's the most important thing. In fact, I'm going to say that again because that for me hits a nail on the head. It's... It's not about, I'm, I'm not thinking, oh, I, I don't want to do this and I can't do that. What, what I'm focused on and what I want is, I know how I like to live. And, and when I'm ticking all those boxes, I feel awesome. So that's, and obviously a big part of that is, is living sober. So that's kind of where I'm at. So I'll just go for over the last couple of days of before I flew, just to give you some idea of how ridiculous the the alcoholism is. So I'd, I'd f I had like a two week window before I was flying and I had all these numbers in my head of right, or, or initially it was like, okay, if you stop, if you have your last drink 14 days before you fly, then you get to South America, that's on North America and you'll be two weeks over. So that gives you a great start. It's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then obviously you, I fucked that up and by a day and you go down 13, 12, 11 and, and then you know, and then you get to 10 and you're like, okay. And this is how my head works, okay. This is 10 days before you're flying out. So you're still in double digits. Just stop now. Get there with 10 days sobriety. That's awesome. Of course, the evening comes. You fuck it up. All goes to shit. Nine, eight, seven, you know, so on. And you're getting to this point. I'm getting to this point where this is going, this is ridiculous. You, you're heading to, you're going to drink the night before you fly. And then you, you then you, I'm projecting, I'm thinking, oh my God, what if I order a drink on the plane? You know, how fucked up would that be? Although... I must admit, I did feel pretty confident that that wouldn't happen. But nevertheless, I ended up drinking every night. Um, I had to come out of the house I was in, obviously, and get it ready um, to hand the keys back over. Um, and I planned to do that the day before I flew, or to give the keys back the day before I flew. Um, anyway, I was, I was, my son was having some of my stuff, big stuff like my bed and my TV. So we, we agreed that we'd do it a day early. So I ended up staying in a, a guest house for the last two nights. Um, so I actually thought that would be a positive. I thought, awesome. So you give your keys back. I had no possessions apart from a big travel suitcase and a big rucksack. That's, that's all I had. That's, that's all I have to my name, which is unbelievable. Um, so I gave my... Um, Sorry, I'm just trying to get my bearings of, of what I did. Um, oh, so the first, so I gets to the, I, I, I does, I, so this is three days before I flew. So I gets to the guest house, guest house, 
awesome. Nice place. I'd stopped there one night before when uh, I'd left my ex partner. Uh, so I knew the kind of area in the place. Um, bear in mind, I'd woke up first thing that morning knowing that I, well, no matter what happens, you do not drink. You're going to have a minimum of three days sobriety when you get to uh, North America. And I was, I was, you know, I was, I was, in my in my mind, I was a hundred percent adamant that that was going to happen. Anyways, the day went on. I, I'm doing some little jobs that I needed to do to get things sorted out, and I couldn't check into his guest house till about two p.m. Um, so my whole mindset just did a one eighty, and I and I let it. You know, it was like, do you know what? I'm going to buy half a bottle. I'm going to get some lemonade, and I'm going to have a little drink tonight. Because my world was upside down, which it was, and this is no excuse. My world, my life, everything was upside down, and I've got this huge life-changing event where I'm going to go live somewhere else for up to six months. You know, I mean, that's huge. I've never done anything like that before. So, before I got to guest house check in, I'd, I'd bought half a bottle of whiskey, I'd, I'd bought some lemonade or coke, I don't know what it was. So, I'd set myself up to drink, which is just absolutely ridiculous. So, I get Sarah checks in. And I think this was about, I messed around, did some other jobs, and it got to about 5pm, and I poured a, a drink in the, in the room, and I watched a bit of TV, and I must admit, it was okay, because I was chilling out, I was trying to relax, and my head was all over with what was about to happen. Um, and the idea was just to have, you know, a couple of whiskies. <laughs> so it, I've had a couple, and then I decide, oh, I know, I'll go the serving... Um, dinner down there this was about half past six so i'd only had a couple of drinks so i goes down and i'm sat down and the guest home was pretty empty guest house was pretty empty uh, and they've got so where they eat there's this bar in the corner i was just in full alcoholism mode i'm looking at all the drinks so i ended up ordering a, a double whiskey and lemonade and some food and here's a, here's a weird bit i saw a pint of in the uk we call it english bitter John Smith's, and I was I was just obsessing. I was like, well, this is the last night you're going to drink, so just just have one. And this is not something I ever drunk. It's just, it was just the wanting again. So I, so I ordered a double whiskey and lemonade and a pint of bitter, took it over, and I, I drank it, and I ate a lovely meal. And I went back to my room, and I actually, I'd had enough. After, so I'd had two whiskeys out of a half a bottle, but I'd ordered a double whiskey and lemonade and a pint of bitter. So, not a lot to drink for someone like me, you know. Um, so I went back to the room, and I think it was around about eight, nine o'clock, so I watched a bit of TV downstairs or whatever, and I was really tired, and, you know, it was like, okay, you fucked the day three up, you didn't want to drink, you wanted to, to have three days before you flew, but you fucked it up. So I actually got the half bottle of whiskey out, and it was only half, I'd only used half of it, and I went to the sink, and I poured it out that night, and it was like, right, you're done. <laughs> went to sleep. So I woke up the penultimate night of, of flying and that day involved getting rid of my car to taking it over to my friends. Um, so I was sat around like a bit of a, um, I was just sat around in the morning, I didn't have nothing to do. So I ended up, I thought I'm, I'm gonna go, he lives over at the seaside. So I thought I'm gonna go visit the seaside and go just drive around different areas and just say goodbye to a few things for a while. So I ended up doing that, and I really enjoyed it. I drove around the coast, a few different places. Um, and the way I'd set this day up was, um, the night before, was to drop my car off at my friends, and then he was going to drive back, and we were going to go to a football game, because I'm a Bradford City fan, and I was going to go to my last home game, um, which would have made it impossible for me to drink. Um, so in my head, it was awesome. It was a really good idea. Um, so as I said, I spent a good day. As I got to the, about the middle of the day, the voice was back and it was like, this is your, you're flying tomorrow. This is your last chance to get a drink today. How are you going to do it? Knowing that I couldn't drink now and I couldn't drink tonight because I was at football. And it really started to mess with my head. Um, and it is, it's, it's just, yeah, I mean, if you're watching this video, you you know exactly where I'm coming from. It's it's pathetic, um, and it, that just took control of the whole day for me. It was just always in my mind. Um, so anyway, dropped the car off. We drove back. We had a laugh. We went to football. 
But all as all this was going on, um, I eventually came up with a master plan, which was if I can get back in time to the guest house, if they might still serve a couple of drinks. Here's a fucked up bit. But then in my mind, I'd made up my mind that if I get there, bear in mind this was about 20 past, this would have been about 20 past 10 p.m. That if I get there and they're not, and I can't get a drink, then I'm going to ring a taxi and I'm going to get him to take me to somewhere where I can buy half a bottle and some coke and bring it back and just have a, a little drink. Yeah, that's fucked up, isn't it? Now here's the real fucked up part. I had to be up at 4am that, that next day to be at the airport for 5am. So I had, I had like a six and a half hour window that you could have a very quick drink, then you need to get some sleep because you're up so early. You know, this shouldn't have been in my bloody head at all. Thinking about alcoholism should have not been there, but it was. So, as I say, we went to football and I'm just obsessing. And that much so that obviously I, I, I wasn't driving anymore, that I was calculating how long it would take us to get out of the stadium, walk to, the, to my mate's car and for him to drop me off at the guest house. And I'm, I'm looking at my clock thinking, well, if we do this, if we do that, we might better shave five minutes off it. It was obsessive. It was ridiculous. I even said to him, because we were actually we actually won the game 2 0, which was nice. Um, but I actually said to him, with about five minutes of the game to go, we never ever left a game early. Now, even if we were playing shit, we never, it's just tradition, we never would. But I actually said to him, with about five minutes to go, do you want to go? Because obviously he had to drive back and I was really pushing him because all I could think about was well, that would be five extra minutes I would gain to get to the guest house and perhaps they would count, they would serve me a drink. <laughs> Fucking mad. <laughs> Terrible. Um, anyway, long story short, got to the, back to the guest house, said goodbye to a couple of my friends, which was hard. Got into the guest house for about 10 past 10 p.m. and saw the guy and said, is there any chance of getting a drink? And he went, yeah, 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 of course you can. And that was it, I was like, it's ridiculous. So I went to the bar and Knowing that obviously I couldn't have a lot, which I didn't want a lot, but I had to have a drink. That's the point. It didn't matter how much I had. I just had to have a drink. So I ordered a double whiskey and lemonade. And the guy sort of looked at me and he knew I was up early because I'd ordered a book to taxi. And he went, is this to help you sleep? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, it's to help me sleep. You know, or I should have made my own. said, not really, it's not going to touch the sides because I'm a fucking raging alcoholic. I just need to have a drink in me. But that probably wouldn't have gone down well. So, <laughs> he's part of this double whiskey and cork. And I looked over to the bar and I saw these small can of Pringles, which are crisps in the UK. Um, and I said, oh, give me a small packet of them, if you don't mind. And he just said to me, he said, um, I've got some sour cream flavoured ones in the back, do you want them instead? I said, oh, lovely, they're my favourite. So he went to the back and he said, all right, it'll be a couple of minutes. So I'm drinking, so I've not paid for anything, so I'm drinking this double whiskey and lemonade. It's got a lot of lemonade in it. And I've, I'm, I've, I've done about half of it when he comes back. And all I can think about is, I need more of this, I need more. Um, so he, he puts the crystal on the counter and I said, oh, I said, do me a favour, he, he goes to the till to start getting the cost of it. And I said, Oh, do me a favour, just stick another one in this glass, will you, and then I'll take it up. And he went, go, oh, you're thirsty. Quite embarrassing. So he put another one, so it was like three whiskies. Now, I know they're like bar measurements, which are nothing to what I would normally drink. But nevertheless, three whiskies and lemonade. Um, <laughs> excuse me, I do apologise. Um, and I took the... I took it upstairs and I polished it off pretty quickly. I mean, you know, at this time, it's, it's half past 10 at night. I'm up at 4 p.m. flying, you know, catching two planes, flying for like nine hours on two planes. Deadlines to meet, places to be. And it's just like, that should have been the last bloody thing I was thinking around about. Anyway, um, as I say, I succumbed to it. It's pathetic, I know. But I honestly believed in my heart that that it felt like that was the last time you can drink, so you have to do it. Um, anyway, got up next morning, and because I'd not had a great deal, I didn't feel too bad, I felt pretty good. Obviously, the nerves and excitement of the day ahead. Um, um, and the next little test was, I was sat next to a, a lady, a stranger. Um, I flew from Leeds Bradford to 
Dublin in Ireland, um, and on that plane, it was only an hour flight, so the booze wasn't a problem. But obviously, I had a three hour wait over in Ireland, and I actually thought that that might be a problem because you know, it's everyone or people in airports and stag do's and hen nights are in holiday mode, and there's a lot of beer getting drunk. But I was fine, you know, I just wanted to eat really, um, so I was fine. And then my next test was when I got on the big plane. Um, and obviously there's quite a few servings when you're, you're on a plane for seven, eight hours. Um, and the lady next to me was a drinker. I say a drinker, she had a couple of wines and a beer. But, you know, it, it, but I, I'm, I'm, I'm really chuffed to say it never entered my mind to just think, oh, I'll have a quick one, no one will know. You know, it was like, I was pretty set. Um, and that was probably the last time that I genuinely, on that plane, was probably the last time that I really thought about it. Um, obviously landed, um, and then I've just been sort of watching the days now. It's been really good because it's, it's actually been exactly how I thought and hoped it'd be when I'm here. The drinking is not an issue, you know. Um, I can 100% see it for what it is. It was pathetic, it's a real fuck up I, I've made. Um, but I honestly, you, you know what it's like, a lot of people really do focus on the numbers and if you say I'm 12 days sober, you know, a lot of people go, oh, you got to be careful, you know, that's not a lot. And it's not, but I'm, I'm too wise, I'm too experienced in this now to be worried about it, I'm really not. Um, I am sober again, you know, so that's a 100% feel back on track with that and I don't want to drink. Um, Looking back and looking from above, looking in on, on what's happened, I um, I had to, I got this huge period of sobriety, and sometimes within that I wondered what it'd be like to have a little drink again, um, and that's what I've done, you know, and it's crap. Once, you, <laughs> once you're sorry, once you're off button, once you come to terms with knowing your off button doesn't work. It never ever repairs itself. It only gets worse. And um, even after 18 months without a drink, it comes back very quickly. Um, and 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 even if it's as I've, I've as I've documented in the last two videos, it hasn't been as bad as I thought it was going to be. I thought if I picked a drink up again, it'd be the end of me, and it's not. Now I'm not talking about moderating or anything. Or it's just it's not that dramatic. I thought it would be really life changing life changing dramatic, but it's not. But it's it's it takes things away from you um very subtly. Uh, you know if I just write down a few little things of what's happened, bad eating, lying, spending money I haven't got, all these little things just happen automatically when you drink and the biggest downfall of it all for me is you let it in back here and it just becomes part of your daily routine, thinking about it. Um, and obviously when you do get a bit of sobriety, you, you eventually get that peace of mind where you don't think about it. Uh, and luckily I'm, I'm there now, you know. So I am looking to get some serious numbers under my belt, um, but I'm not stressing about it because that just kind of happens. But yeah, I've, you know, I've, I'm not, kind of celebrate like I did first time around when I get to 42 weeks and uh, 30 days and so on but it'd just be nice to just to put a bit of a foundation under there again um, it is what it is uh, I um, I'm about a month and eight days off the cigarettes and that hasn't been a problem whatsoever so just try to get I've been eating quite well over here, <laughs> um, doing a bit of comfort eating and stuff, so I just need to get that, but the weather's been awesome, so I've, I've got plenty of walks been happening, um, so I'm, I'm keeping my fitness levels up. So I think that's about it, um, it's a long video, 25 minutes, sorry if I bored the shit out of you, but this, this is a much more positive video for me. Um, the last two were supposed to be positive. Um, but I honestly think deep down I knew that I might not manage to stay sober. Um, 
but I can guarantee to anyone watching this right now and to myself and to my um, sobriety buddy, you know, I am in, I am right back mentally to where I was. Um, which is a great feeling. It's a very, very good feeling. Um, so once again, thanks for all the messages I got from the last couple of videos and help and support. Much appreciated. Um, and if anyone out there struggling and need to know anything, if I think I can help, just drop a message below and um, I'll come straight back to you. So thanks for watching everyone and I'll hopefully get back to making my um, 30 day updates because I think that'd be quite good to do for the next three months. Make a, next, a video every month um, just to see see how it's gone. So um, again, thanks for watching. Stay strong everyone. Bye.